right, well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube, Pastor Dow here. I guess I'm going to be dealing with a, I don't even know why, to tell you the truth, I, I do not know why some subjects are considered controversial. And I guess because I have a working knowledge of scripture and what the word says. But for some reason, uh, this weekend, I received an influx of communiques about what is my take on marriage and divorce, remarried and divorce, and can a man or woman get remarried again? Well, first of all, number one, I don't have a take. I can only give you what the word says. You can pick and choose what you want to do with it from there. I do know this. I do know that religion knows how to twist, warp, distort, pervert. And you have to understand, a lot of times churches out there, pastors or whoever they may be, they're sincere. Of course, you know, and being sincere does not mean that you're right. It could also be sincere and be sincerely wrong. Um, but anytime you're faced with any type of subject, the first thing in the first order of business that needs to be at hand is that you must determine and you need to determine of your own accord that rather than always run into a channel and seeing what some pastor or some prophet or some evangelist or some teacher has to say and then you look for those who your spirit agree with because everybody's going to agree with someone who has a very humble and nice and kind disposition most people think that they will agree with John the Baptist today, and that's going to be nothing far from the truth. Trans, all you probably hate him. Um, but you need to first get an understanding what the Bible says yourself. At least do some type of due diligence, and then go and hear what a man of y'all said. You know, the book says um, over in the book of Acts that the Marines were more noble than they in Thessalonica because they searched the scriptures to see if the things that were so. So let me go ahead and answer the question from the very beginning and then let me turn around and give you at least, you know, I'm going to make this hard on you too. I'm going to give you books for you to read but you're going to have to find the scripture for yourself so that way you'll have some teeth in the game. Alright? If a man or a woman divorces, can they remarry? And the answer is an absolute yes. Yes, they can. Now, I noticed that everybody always want to go back to the beginning. And when I'm talking about to the beginning, I'm talking about to the beginning of Adam and Eve. You know, you got to start from somewhere. And, and people use this as a structure to spin the narrative. They use this as a structure to try to put the expectations upon human society today when in the beginning and they're preaching and teaching from that perspective they're teaching and speaking from a perspective before the fall of man and before sin had entered into the world now when sin entered into the world the most high had to develop laws did you know that when Adam and Eve was in the garden there was no laws and a lot of times, let me give you an example. When anytime you see a preacher trying to go back and use the strength of in the beginning, you know, such as you hear Jesus says, in the beginning it was not so. No, he was telling you the way that the original intent and the original plan of things was supposed to be. Since then, things have changed. And they, so since they have been changed, then anytime the Most High makes laws and gives rules and regulations, uh, you can believe that. All right, so, but you know, in the beginning, Adam and Eve didn't wear clothes. So should we always go back to the in the beginning to try to prove a point? Because if we're going to go back and use in the beginning, there's a lot of things that we have to reconsider. If we're going to apply that type of force of understanding, nonsensical, I might add, upon a people of unsuspecting minds and people who don't use self-autonomy, then we don't have to apply everything that was before the beginning and we're going to start right there then. So, first of all, in the law, the Torah. And you remember what Jesus said in Matthew. Don't you think I come to destroy the law of the prophets? I didn't come to destroy, but I came to fulfill. 
Now in the Torah, in the book of Deuteronomy, there is provisions for divorce. It sure is. And of course, I believe in the apocryphal books because they are in the original 1611 King James Version of the Bible. I don't know who became uninspired and decided to remove um, any of the prophecies from this book because open book of Revelation, it gives you um, how the people who do that are going to be doomed. But, you know, over in the apocrypha, it teaches that if your wife doesn't go as you would have her to go, then you put her away and give her a bill of divorce. Um, over in Jeremiah, uh, the Most High, the creator of the universe, the creator, the creator of the universe, he is a divorcee himself. He divorced his people Israel, and he told Judah that if you don't get your act together, I'm going to give you one too. And so Israel went off into exile because Israel uh, wanted to uh, go out there and prostitute and fornicate with many lovers. And that was in a religious sense. Okay? That's what they were doing. We're supposed to be serving the most high in his law, statutes, and commandments, but we decided to try to be like the people around us and be like the other nations. And after all this rebellion, the most high says, you know what? I'm going to give you a bill of divorce. He gave a bill of divorce. And then he asked, where is that bill that I gave you? And so you got the most high that was divorcing. And... You, you have the law, Deuteronomy 24, that gives you instruction for divorce. And all of a sudden, we get to the renewed covenant of the New Testament. People think that the unchangeable, most high, our Yahweh Elohim, changes. And he doesn't. And now, all of a sudden, they won't put all these requirements. Listen, there was a, a church down in Nashville, Tennessee, called Mary Street Church of God. And they had young men sitting up in that church that their wives had left them and they went off into the world. Some of them went to whoredoms. Some of them went, left them, went off into the world, got divorced from them and had babies by other men. Do you know that that church still requires for those men to never get married, never lay with another woman, watch this, but they, if they going to be married, they got to wait till this woman who rebelled, this woman who has done laid with a, another man, thereby the land is greatly polluted. They want this woman in this defiled state to return unto this man. And they want this man to wait on that woman until she comes to her senses. Now, first of all, the book teaches that you will be defiling yourself. If you are a man and your wife has done went out and laid with somebody else, that land is greatly polluted and you can't take her back. Because she has already given her allegiance over to someone else. Are you following? Now listen to me. I understand that you can't cry with spilt milk. A lot of times we are we are just a lot of things we are learning. And we're coming to the knowledge of truth. There's been a lot of things I've come to the knowledge of truth of since being in the faith. And guess what? Too much is given, much is required. Once it's understood, once it's comprehending, you get it, then you walk in it. If you didn't know quite what to do or anything, then then um, what what at that particular time you're still subject to the law, but you have to repent for the ignorance that you're in. But for this church to require that this man set up and wait, he's out of his they're out of their mind. It'd have been better for him. Watch this, and this is what the church world don't want to hear. It'd have been better for him, and he still would have been in his lawful legal right to take on an additional wife. I mean, after all, you don't believe how many preachers. And I look at President Trump. He's done had children by three or four different women. And nobody says nothing uh, about his escapades and all of his divorces and remarriages. And I'm not comparing him by, by any stretch of imagination to nothing in the scripture. But nobody says nothing about him because it's done based upon the laws of the pagan America, the laws of this land. And what are the pagan laws of this land? Well, they believe in serial polygamy. That means divorce, remarriage, divorce, remarriage, divorce, remarriage. See, they believe in consecutive marriages only, but just as long as you have one at that time. But you're still responsible for the fruit that comes from those unions. You, you understand what I mean? And so this is a double standard all the way around. 
it been better for that man to get an additional wife, and he would not he would not have been sinning under the law of Yah. Why? Let's just tell the truth, okay? All right. Abraham, the father of the faith, and mind you, Christianity, they always will ignore this and try to figure out some way to try to explain it away. But stick with the facts. Abraham, the father of the faith, not only did he have wives, but Abraham had concubines. That is a an Israelite culture and heritage. Are you following me? That's not Greco-Roman in Greece. I mean, you think about it, all right? You look in history. You know, a lot of people run around with these Spartans helmets. And everybody wants to be a Spartan. At least they fancy themselves to be a Spartan. But they don't, one thing they don't know about the Spartans was, is that the Spartans were an army of homosexuals. Their theology and their philosophy at the time was that if you had a homosexual union, then you would fight that much more harder for your brother next to you. And the only reason why that they would even acquire wives, and it, which was later on for the purpose of procreation, that was to repopulate Sparta with more warriors. Think about that. So, but the truth is, polygamy, or what is really defined as polygyny, has never been a sin in the Bible. And I challenge anyone out there in the world to show me the law where a man having more than one wife is a sin. I mean, after all, I mean, you don't care anyway. You don't have more than one wife anyway. You don't have wives, girlfriends, and everything else. Jump offs, throw offs. Uh, and, and it's just amazing. And then women today, they, they fit that, that one woman who has had uh, seven husbands. You no, know, you have five husbands, and one that's with you now is not even your own. So you got Abraham, the father of faith. He had wives and concubines. You got Moses who had three wives. And then you turn around and you, you get uh, Gideon, a bunch of wives. Elkina, who had the, uh, the prophet Samuel. He had two wives at that time. Of course, David had 18 between wives and concubines. Then Solomon, he turns around and he, he has 700 wives and 300 concubines. And then he turns around and his son Rehoboam, he has about 18 or 20 wives and concubines. And, and then you go to the historian Josephus. Herod had about 12 wives at the time. And it was just Israelite culture. Today what people call it the Jewish religion. It has, it's nothing European. It's nothing Christianity about it. Because like I said with the Spartans and all them, they would have homosexuals and they'd be fine. And look at the Catholic Church and, and all the altar boys that they done uh, messed up and all the nuns and stuff. Do you think they practice what they pre preach and believe what they say? No. Uh -uh. But for someone to try to sit up and condemn you and tell you that you cannot get remarried unless the person this this is how the church spent it. Unless your first husband or wife is dead. First of all, man and women laws are different concerning marriage. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. If the woman's not married, he has not committed no adultery at all. Now, he can fornicate, which that word is, is really the words for the whoredoms in the Old Testament. It's fornication is something new that they done made up to and stuff. But anyway, uh, I think I'll get what I'm saying. But you have people who don't know the word that will try to put uh, traditions and their church philosophies up and above the very word of the most high himself and then you just look at look at jesus he gave analogies virgins five wise and five foolish and he still got married to five of them and then you look at this one god that's going to be coming back and have a marriage supper of the lamb with all these re redeemed born again israelites and those other nations you're going to be married to them all at once so it's nonsensical to try to look at the scriptures from an, uh, a Western, European, pagan, Christianity mindset because it's not going to fit. Even in Islam, they even got laws that's written down um, in, in uh, the Quran that a man can have up to four wives. They put restrictions on it, but there's nothing in the book that restricts that. But then you get society over there to tell you, oh, you can't have number one wife. That's on paper. 
You see, if a man has one wife on paper, a state marriage license, and if he has covenant agreement with otherwise, he has broken no laws in his land. He is not only has he not broken any laws in his land, he's not even broken the law of God. He is because he has not sinned. As long as he's taking care of his duty and responsibilities, like the word says, he is spot on. Now, religion may condemn you, but religion is not going to be your redeemer, and the religion is not going to save you. And if you got preachers and teachers out there who really think that they know all this stuff, like it's happening, listen to this video right here. Ain't too many people going to be inviting me uh, to their assemblies or their churches because I'm going to shame a lot of their traditions, perspectives, and point of views. And then let me also say this. You know, I got a debate lined up coming up here pretty quick. It's a nonsense going on. I don't even know why I took it, Tay True. I took it because, probably because it's so damn stupid and nonsensical that I realize that a lot of people are going to be deceived by it. So I know I'm a man of truth, so I might as well bring it out. But when I take debates on subjects and topics and stuff, uh, you, may, you might as well just get ready. It may be upwards of six months to a year before I can get to you. That's because I'm a different man of God. I'm a different pastor. Than, than what you've ever ever seen or encounter in this world. I'm a working pastor, a working man. I'm extremely busy. My life is on display out here on YouTube and Patreon and stuff, and you get to clearly see what I'm doing almost on a weekly basis. These other people, you can't see what their lives is all about. They mostly live life for themselves and enrich themselves for themselves. That's what they do. My life is not like it. But anyway... It is not a sin for you to be married and divorced. Now, did divorce come? Yeah, it came for a reason. Either you got a rebellious woman or a rebellious man. Either way it goes, it comes from the hardness of the heart. And who cares about the school of Shemael or Helial? Nobody cares about none of that. You have to stay within the confines of the word. You go outside of that, you're going to end up on sandy, sinking ground. So no, you're not going to end up going to no hell because you had a rebellious woman that left you, went out and opened up her legs to somebody else, defiled herself. You can't do that. The land will be greatly polluted. I mean, the Most High was trying to demonstrate through the prophet Hosea how bad that he wanted Israel to repent and return. He was trying to clean up, but Israel was saying, uh-uh. Sure so did. Didn't want to. And he ended up saying, you're not even my people no more. That's it. So, there's much to be desired. I understand this goes against everything, but to turn around and tell a man that he has to go back into a land where another man has done put his DNA inside this woman and then he needs to turn around and go back in it in order to claim it again? Boy, that's crazy. First of all, number one, that's just nasty. A woman is the field. The man is the seed. It's even against the law to keep sowing many different diversities of seed in, in, one, in one section of the field. We you don't sit up and having men, multiple men, putting DNA all up in these women. No wonder they're confused today. No wonder these children got challenges today. Man. Well, anyway, I know I've said enough to pee off a lot of people, but I know one thing. Come out of her, my people. Come out from among them. Be separate. Ask your preachers and teachers, why don't they teach living separate? Why don't they really truly teach the model of the early church over in the book of Acts and separate from the people of this world? Why don't they preach and teach that? That's because they love a lavish lifestyle and what you provide for them. That's the reason why they're not about to teach that. Well, you're going to have to because the way this world going, they're, they're trying to force you. Matter of fact, they you know, cause us all to do all kinds of things today. Hope you're able to stand. Hope I answer your, your question there. So there's no need in walking in condemnation. Provide for things honestly. Do things honestly, just and true. And you really need, you really need to get into some type of fellowship to where you're accountable to each other. Uh, where you can have uh, somebody to help you along in life because your mom and daddy didn't do it and your relatives didn't do it and you ain't doing it. You need to have this accountability. Y'all blessed day. All right.